Something I've always struggled with in all my games is that I always want the movement to feel fast, and at the same time, I want the world to feel huge. But weirdly, I find that when I make the player move faster, it makes the world feel smaller. So to compensate, I increase the world size, and now I'm back where I started. It's like this. Imagine you're in a plane screaming through the air at over 500 miles per hour. Looking out the window, it doesn't feel particularly fast. The scenery is just barely crawling by. Only during the slowest part of the flight, the landing, can you really feel the speed because stuff is flying past the window. So based on my extensive research here, I figure I need some foliage and rocks and stuff for the player to fly past and give a sense of how fast they're going. Fortunately, I have some assets that should work great for this, but I'm not about to place thousands of these assets manually. I need some kind of foliage system to automatically distribute them, which I've never built before. There are a few Godot plugins that can scatter assets around a scene for me. They serve different niches, but the best overall is probably Proton Scatter. It's easy to set up, it has great documentation, and a professional looking UI. But I can't figure out how to smoothly fade the density of instances. I can have areas with 100% instances and areas with 0% instances, but nothing in between. The plugin is also kind of slow. There's no way around it. I have to write my own plugin. Let's say we have a 100 by 100 meter area, and we need to scatter 100 instances evenly across it. The first idea that comes to mind is to just pick 100 random points. But if we do this, we see that the points aren't actually evenly distributed. There are clumps and bald spots. And worse, sometimes two points end up practically on top of each other, resulting in overlapping instances. To solve this, we need to check every instance against every other instance and make sure they're a certain distance apart. I haven't read all the proton scatter code, but I think this is what it does. It would explain why it's so slow. To place 500 instances, it has to perform at least 250,000 checks. We need a way to randomly, evenly distribute points in a space in a performant way. Now, I have a vague idea that blue noise can help us do this because people use it all the time in computer graphics and it's basically magic. You're probably more familiar with white noise. That's where every pixel has a totally random brightness. If we blur this image, it's easy to see there are some clumps and bald spots. This is the exact same problem we had earlier and we can solve it the same way. Basically, we make sure that pixels with similar brightness are spread a certain distance apart. And the result is blue noise. It still looks pretty random, but if we take this image and blur it, we can see it's much more even. Back to white noise for a moment. If we take this image and repeat it, the pattern is glaringly obvious and visually jarring. Now the cool thing about the blue noise calculation is that we can ensure similar pixels are spaced far apart even when the image is repeated. And the result is a flawless tiling pattern. So how do we take this magic image and use it to place instances in a scene? Well, we take advantage of the final and most magical property of blue noise, which is that it can be made progressive. What that means is if we take every pixel in this image that is below a threshold of say 10% brightness, the resulting image is also blue noise, no matter what threshold we pick. As the threshold increases, more and more pixels appear, but always evenly spaced and always tileable. So we can just take every pixel that's below a certain threshold and place an instance there. What threshold should we use? That's a decision for the level designer to make. The level designer is also me. And the great part is we don't have to use the same threshold everywhere. We can set it higher in some areas than others. That means we can smoothly fade the threshold from low to high to get gradually more and more instances. After two weeks of noodling, the plugin is ready. It's called Scattershot. You can download it now on GitHub or the Godot asset library. I'm happy with the performance so far. Scattershot only spawns one chunk of instances per frame because I can tolerate a bit of pop in every once in a while, but I really can't tolerate frame rate stutters. You might be surprised to learn that Scattershot actually doesn't use multi meshes. Multi meshes let you render many copies of the same mesh at a reduced performance cost. So many scatter plugins use them, including Proton Scatter. But a multi mesh can only render copies of one single mesh. If you have 10 different assets you want to scatter around, you need 10 different multi meshes. In addition, the individual copies don't support frustum calling. Either all the meshes are rendered or none of them. 
These issues combined mean that I would likely have to create a lot of multi meshes with only a handful of instances in each one. I just didn't think it was worth it. Because Scattershot updates almost instantly, it's really fun to play around with. It doesn't have as many features as Proton Scatter yet, so give it a try and let me know what you think is missing. As for the original goal of making the player feel fast, I think scattering these assets around really helps. Combined with level design adjustments, tweaks to the player controller, audio cues, particle effects, camera bob, and motion blur, I think it's starting to feel nice. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you're interested to see how this all turns out, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.